Story Aladdin and the Wonderful Lamp In a land far, far away lived Aladdin and his mother. Aladdin, Awara's father, had passed away years ago, and since then, Aladdin and his mother lived in poverty. One day, a stranger came up to Aladdin and said he was his uncle. Aladdin believed him immediately, and the wizard, because that's who the stranger really was, rewarded Aladdin with beautiful clothes and gifts. After a while, the wizard took Aladdin into the mountains. I want to show you something magical, oh, he said. They started a fire. The wizard threw some powder into the fire and spoke a spell. The earth started shaking and a flat stone appeared. Underneath the stone in the ground there, as a treasure, it is for you, Aladdin, but you have to obey me. The wizard gave Aladdin a ring that would protect him from all evil and send the boy down. Aladdin obeyed the wizard, picked up the rock, and climbed down. He walked through a room where he was not allowed to touch anything, walked through an orchard where he picked the most delicious fruits, and eventually he got to a burning lamp. Aladdin took the lamp back up with him. Even before he could climb out, the wizard demanded the lamp. But Aladdin refused. The wizard got so angry that he locked Aladdin inside the cave. Aladdin was in despair and crying in the dark. At some point, he accidentally rubbed the ring of the wizard. Immediately, a big genie appeared. The genie got Aladdin out of the cave, and the boy ran home as fast as he could. At home, he noticed that the fruit he had picked had turned into beautiful gems. Aladdin decided to sell the lamp, so he wanted to give it a good cleaning. After rubbing the lamp a few times, another genie appeared. What can I do for you? Your wish is my command, ooh, said the genie. Aladdin understood the power that he had been given and made smart use of it. His mother and him never lived in poverty again. After a couple of happy years, Aladdin saw a glimpse of the daughter of the sultan in the lamp. At once, he fell in love and wanted to marry her. He sent his mother to the palace to talk with the sultan. She took the magic fruit with her and returned as many times as it was needed for the sultan to see her. After seeing the gems, the sultan agreed to the marriage, but it would take place three months later. While Aladdin was waiting those three months, the sultana's most important minister convinced the sultan to let his son marry the princess. When this news reached Aladdin, he became infuriated. He used the magic lamp to split up the newly married couple. He succeeded, and when the three months were over, Aladdin's mother returned to the castle. The sultan again agreed to the marriage, but this time his price was higher. Aladdin could easily afford it with the help of his magic lamp and also let the genie build a beautiful palace for his bride. It was truly a world wonder, with the most beautiful marmor and sparkling jewels everywhere. Even the sultan was impressed. For many years, Aladdin and his princess lived happily and peacefully in the palace. The people loved them, and Aladdin was nice to everyone. The mean wizard also heard about Aladdin's success and wanted to get the magic lamp no matter what. He traveled to Aladdin's palace, and when Aladdin was out hunting, the wizard was able to steal the magic lamp. He said to the genie, Take me, the palace and the princess, to a remote place far, far away. When Aladdin returned home from hunting, the palace and his princess were gone. He immediately suspected that the mean wizard was behind it. Desperately, he started searching. Suddenly, Aladdin remembered that he still had the wizard's ring. Bring me to my wife's window, oh, he said. And that happened. Together with the princess, Aladdin thought of a plan to get rid of the wizard. 
After that, the genie brought Aladdin, the princess, and the palace, back to its original place, and here they lived happily ever after.